Hey, welcome back to the Relentless Positivity Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Martin. We've got an awesome guest for you today. Appreciate him coming in, my buddy, John Bear, B-A-I-R, from Bear Knuckle Strength up in the Philly area, Fort Washington. Uh, he's a coach, he's an author, he's a truth teller, a business owner, and uh, we're going to get into this thing right here. So, John, man, appreciate you being on here. Joe, thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to this, my brother. That's it, man. So, uh, so tell me a little bit about how you grew up and where you grew up and all that stuff, and we'll just kick it from there. Yeah, sure, man. Um, uh, so how I grew I grew up in Pennsylvania, um, southeastern Pennsylvania, right in the suburbs of Philadelphia, um, uh, Montgomery County. And growing up, um, was a little bit heavier kid. Um, it was just kind of, food became a comfort for me. And it was something that was, um, I found myself, um, like most of the, the world, we, we find something to kind of run away from our fears or our pain. And that's kind of like what we learn at a young age is, you know, oh, food tastes good or ice cream or, you know, whatever the thing is, um, somebody might fall into that. So for me, I ended up being a little bit of a heavy kid and growing up was a little bit of a challenge because I saw a lot of kids my age starting to play sports and stuff like that. And um, I, I actually tried out for a football team and it, because they were weighted leagues when you're younger, I was too heavy to play. And that was a really like that hurt. Um, you know, at seven, eight, nine years old to tell you, you can't play football with all the other kids. I was like, oh man, um, which made me kind of like even eat more. Right. Um, so, you know, that was kind of, let's say that's like the, the foundation, the, the, the bottom of the pyramid. Um, John found a way to start to get through life using food as comfort. Um, right. And most people will say, put their own insert your thing in there. Um, but when you start to look back on your life, um, in the re like, what, especially when you start to do it from a critical perspective. And that's really why we're on this call, right, Joe, is to, to bring it, uh, some awareness to some of the things that you and I have seen and some of the things that you and I have gone through. And the reason I'm starting with telling people that I was a heavy kid um, is because that's kind of what I had to go back to and learn why I was a heavy kid and where that started and the decisions that I made. Um, because once I started to understand that, then I was actually started able to uh, make real changes in my life, which is right. what we're all about, right? That's it, man. Yeah. So, yeah. So I have a similar story, you know, overweight and uh, kind of we talked about it before we hopped down. I'll actually, just that every day you wake up and that's a visual reminder that you're not who you want to be. You know, not that there's anything with being overweight or anything like that, but for if you don't want to be there and you see that every morning, it's kind of a reminder that, man, things just aren't going right. And that's yeah. kind of spiraling these different choices, like what you talked about, that it can go a wrong way if you allow it to. So, Absolutely. Um, for me, um, and I'll just get right into it since we're, we're talking about it, um, then kind of being hit with that realization, like we talked about, like having to go back and understand why I was a heavy kid. Well, the reason that I started doing that, let's fast forward to the age of 25. Um, my brother took his own life. And a year later, I lost my cousin to muscular dystrophy. My brother was 20. My cousin was 25. Um, I lost my brother when I was 25 and I was 26 when I lost my cousin. So it was, I was young, they were young. And being hit with that at such a young age, you have really like one of two options. You can keep perpetuating everything that you've been doing, bury your head and hope it goes away and, and somehow make it out the other side, which a lot of people do. And I, this is not a shame. This is just a, a realization and an observation that I've seen with people, you know, and myself included, um, because I did it for a while. I stuck my head in the sand. I didn't know how to deal with things. I was in shock. Um, but eventually I came to the realization that I was already on a dark road at that time. Um, I was doing drugs. I was not in with the right crew. I had come home from college on a medical withdrawal um, and I just was in a bad place in my life. And then whap, that happened. And then a year later, my cousin. And so you start to really, what am I doing here? What's going on in this world? And you, you start to question things like you were talking about right before we hopped on, like things have got to change. And for me, my why, my, my reason for not choosing the same route that my brother went was I hadn't tried all the opportunities. I hadn't worked to open all the doors. I really wanted to, is it that bad? Is it, 
is life that painful that it's just the only way out is just to, to yes, we all know we're going to die, but to take by your own hand is, I wouldn't say wrong. I would say it's wow. Like that tells me how much pain a person is in. And if that's how much somebody feels, is that the only way there is? And I wanted to see if there was a different way, to be honest. So Same what with you, I'm sure, right? Kind of wake up one day and you're like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Is it just, oh, is it a slow, gradual thing? Or was it kind of lightning bolt moment? What happened? Right after my brother, I was really in shock. So that was October of 2007. October 8th, 2007 is when he passed away. October 30th, 2008 is when my cousin passed away. So a year in, right? Within that year period, um, the first month or so, just in shock. And I made a decision in that moment that I wasn't going to do what my brother did. So while the change has taken 13 years to happen, the decision happened in an instant. And that's what I don't think people realize and understand and appreciate is when you make the decision, it's not going to change overnight. You still have to get up and put in the work and, and work towards doing the things that, that are necessary in order to get you to that change. Um, but when I made the decision, it was split second in the moment. I knew I wanted to live. And then things have unraveled from there. Make sense? Absolutely, man. I have, a, I have a similar story that we talked earlier that I made. I didn't make that decision because I couldn't, I couldn't imagine what it would do to my parents. So I knew I, I took it off the table and it wasn't so much that I want to live. I just didn't want that to happen. And then I slowly started the process. Just like you talked, it wasn't like, okay, I'm ready. I'm fixed. I made that decision. And that was a long time of, of hard work and things that you got to do every day. But you make that decision that you take it off the table. And I know it's, it still creeps back in every now and then. And I want to kind of talk about kind of your, uh, your pillars you use. Because in your book, you talk about you still have suicidal thoughts all the time. They don't go away magically because you made that decision. So how do you kind of keep the demons at bay? What's your, what's your kind of techniques and stuff like that? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, yeah. Um, as, as you talked about, I've written a book. And it's something that anybody can get for free. I didn't write it to make money. Just like we're not doing this podcast to make money. We're doing this to hopefully share our experiences with people and that they find value in it because we've found um, a purpose in life. And so for me, the things, you know, I, I was diagnosed with the severe depression at the age of eight years old. And so that's been the stigma that I've carried, but also something that I have found is really real. There was a reason that that, that word depression creeped about. And the things that have helped me that I fell back on in my darkest moments, um, I, I played football um, from the age of seventh grade through 12th, or excuse me, one year in college. So what's that, seven or eight years of football, um, basically from like sixth grade. So I talked about it. I was too heavy when I was younger, but I still wanted to play. And by the time you get into sixth or seventh grade and there's no weight limit and you're the heavy kid, now it's actually an advantage. And I found that that was a good thing for me. And I kind of found my place there. Um, and then when I started lifting weights, football became like a man, like I could get anger out. I could get frustration out. I could, but I was also part of something bigger. And that's what I fell back on in my darkest moments. Cause when I said to myself, I don't want to die. I'm not ready to go that route. Well, what am I going to do? When did I feel most powerful in my life when I played football? And when I started to break down the structure of it, there was the components of lifting weights. Right. So I, I jumped right into that. Cause I was like, I can do that right now. And so I started doing that. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, my body was so beat up from football. You know, I'm at 25 years old, but I had a shoulder injury at ankle. I'm sure you can appreciate your, you, you have a wrist that was it just jacked up. Um, and that affects like the way you lift. And then when you lift and certain joints hurt, like, man, for me, I couldn't like get it all out through lifting. Um, that energy that to channel what I was going through to help me process with my brother and my cousin. So that the next thing in line that sort of was going to, I believe, help me um, because I, I wasn't playing football. And the thing was, and I didn't touch on this, but I was a heavy kid, right? Well, I got all the way up to 260 pounds playing football in high school. I wasn't going to be in the NFL. I didn't need to be 260 pounds anymore. Um, so nutrition and nutrition from the perspective 
Uh, when I was playing football, you were a lineman too, Joe. I didn't realize this, but when I saw your, I'm sure like peanut butter sandwiches late at night and protein shakes and Everything. all the things you got to no, do. No, there's no prisoners. Everything <laughs> on the table. I used to uh, aid for my football coach my senior year, and it was during the lunch hour. And we had three lunches. Sometimes I go eat three lunches. <laughs> hey man, you trying to stay on the stay on the big boy? I was the smallest lineman too, about 250. So I was always trying to gain a little weight. You know, trying to. Well, I ended up being, um, I learned I was like the quick tackle, the, the backside tackle. I would be that the downfield blocker and things like that. Um, we had guys who were a little bit bigger than me, uh, who were more like point of attack. And we played the kind of offense where like, if there was like a strong side and a weak side, or we called it strong side, quick side. Um, so sometimes we would run into the big guys, but then sometimes we'd flip to the other guys. Or if we were running to the big guys, the, the off, off tackle guys were going downfield to try to lead the block. So the back coming around had a lane. So I ended up being the guy that ran really fast to get downfield and stuff like that. So I found my place. Yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't a guy to maul you and run you over. But yeah, I played offensive line, um, which shocks a lot of people because now when they see me, I'm like 180 pounds and you're what, like 195, maybe 190. So yeah. Around about 195, yeah, somewhere around right, that. way different than 250. You know, I can't imagine you at 250, and I'm sure people can't imagine me at 260. Yeah. Um, but anyway, getting back to what we were talking about, so football was my sanctuary, my place where I, I felt strong and good. And so when I lost my brother and my cousin, that's what popped into my mind. That was was like, okay, I got back in the weight room, I started feeling my aches and pains. And so when I started to dig into nutrition from a perspective of learning, I wanted to lean out and look good. Like who doesn't, I wanted to be ripped and jacked like all guys want to be. Um, and so when I started eating better and really digging into that, the, the aha for me was the people around me started to notice. I used to go to the gym early morning before um, uh, work, I see say school before work. Um, and I would play basketball three days a week and I would lift three days a week and a couple, it was about a month in starting to, like you said, like, like eat better, learn the right things. Just one thing at a time change. Guys started to come up to me and they're like, yo, John, you're not so much of a jerk off dude. Like you had like such a chip. And now we notice that you're, you seem a little bit happier and like more positive and you, you, we can tell you've lost some weight and you're playing better at basketball what are you doing? And I, I was like, oh, I'm lifting weights and I'm, and I'm learning how to really eat better. But when, when I said that to myself and then I thought about it, I was like, holy shit. By learning to eat better, I'm literally changing my body chemistry. It's changing the way that I act and think, which is changing the way that I respond in the world. And people are noticing that. And that that gave me, it was like, holy crap, I have control in who I am, right? And most people sort of go about unconsciously until that thing in their life happens, which starts to wake them up, hopefully, and they don't keep burying themselves. But when you start to wake up to that and you realize everything I've done in my life is the reason that I'm here now, all the choices that I've made were my own. Number one, that's humbling. Number two, it's frightening. Because you're like, wow, I've been doing this to myself, right. which means I could start to learn how to do it better. I mean, what was that like for you going through that? It's the same, humbling, frightening, but also, man, I was like, well, if I can do this to me, then I can also change myself, right? I don't have to wait on somebody else. I don't need, I mean, obviously, if I had a coach back then, it would have sped up the process. But, um, but just knowing that, hey, I can make these choices and go the other way or I can keep going down this dark path that I'm on now, but it's completely on me. Was the same, same with you, man. I was like, that's scary. Um, it's a little humbling, but it's also, man, I'm excited because now I don't feel like I'm at the whim of the world. And it's on me, you know, and that's, that was awesome. That was a big revelation for me. Well, you asked me a question before we hopped on. What do you think is one of the number one misconceptions people have about this depression? And I think that ties into it is, the number one thing people don't understand about depression is that it exists. And they think that when a person's depressed or in a dark place or at the bottom or they're depressed, that they can just, come on, man, kick the blues, get out of it. 
Right. And that's not the way that it works. And so there's a fine line there because there are people who can have depression who are not depressed. However, every person can and will at some time in their life be depressed. Something will happen. Your dog will die. A friend will be hurt. Something will make you sad. Mm -hmm. That's okay to feel that. We're supposed to feel that. Don't run away from that. What I want people to understand is depression is not being depressed. And when somebody has depression and they're all the way at the bottom like that, they don't see the way out. They can't just lick the blues. It's a chemical reaction in their body, which is causing them to feel the way that they feel. And so when you start to learn that difference and what can actually help change the chemistry in your body and bring you out of that depressive state, that's where things like nutrition, right? Because I started eating better, but I wasn't working on my mind. Mm -hmm. But somebody else noticed that I was lighter, showing up better. My chemistry had changed, which brought me to a conscious awareness that I could start to bring myself out of the depression if I started to work on the things that were in my control, eating better, exercising, sleeping, you know. Um, and, and in reality, Joe, down the road, talking to yourself kindly, talking to others kindly, being an empathetic, compassionate person. I, I, may, I don't know what it's like down south for you, but up north here, bud, growing up, especially as a young guy, we're both similar ages. It was be a man, suck it up. Don't be a P-U-S-S-Y. Everybody knows the word. But to talk about empathy and compassion and to be on the other side of that fence now, I realize not only is that necessary, that's what actually makes a man complete, is to learn how to be vulnerable and to share those things with others. And I'm sure you've had similar yeah. come abouts. <laughs> I've never even heard the word empathy. So I was probably in my 20s, right? That's not <laughs> What is that? On the football field very often. No coach I ever had mentioned, uh, hey, fellas, you got to get out there and get more empathetic. Let's go. Break the huddle. Yeah, it's something that, but you do figure out that, you know, hey, there's other people in this world and they matter, right? Right. I'm here to help them. And I just, you know, for me, I talk about, you know, give yourself a fighting chance. You know, you, you're going to have these, these episodes where you're going through them, but control your sleep, you know, control your thoughts as much as you can. Eat right, exercise, move your body. These things are going to give you a fighting chance. When it does it, maybe you don't go down quite as deep. You know, you're going to have those spots and those low valleys and all those things, but give yourself that fighting chance. And just, and like I said, it feels better if you have this, even just a little bit of control of your life. Well, I mean, it, it makes you feel empowered. Like you have the ability to change. And then, so like one of our mentors talks about Justin, how he talks about a lot of things, everything stems from our beliefs and, and decisions that we made when we were younger. And so you talked about, identity you know you identified as a football player i mean i identified as a little fat kid and even while playing football i was still a big fat kid who played football but i felt empowered because i was lifting weights and i was a stronger fat kid so right. i was able to kind of tamp the fat kid down but that came crashing back to reality when my brother passed away and i started to revert back on all my old habits i wasn't lifting i wasn't doing all the things i didn't feel empowered because my belief, my subconscious belief was I was still that fat kid. And so I needed to make a decision like I did when uh, I decided I wanted to live, basically, that I was going to do everything I could. And part of that I've learned is changing my identity, how I actually view myself and talk to myself. Because in order to be a person in the world who, number one, is just not a liability to others, but an asset. You have to do that work on yourself. And if people are going to show up and pay you money and listen to you to like, hey, you want me to like lift weights and do all this stuff and pay you money? Are you crazy? Yeah. Well, look, you have to be, you have to live that life. You have to really be in it and be part of it and practice what you preach as well. But I think it goes beyond that for us, Joe. It's, um, it's just who we are. It's our purpose now. I mean, you, I don't know. You tell me, like, how did you like I know you like lifted weights, but how did you transition into like helping people the way that you do? Um, I just knew that how good I felt and how my life had changed when, you know, it's just losing weight. Not that it, I was a better person because I was smaller or anything like that. I just, I don't know. I just, it's like you said, I can just show up better in the world. Uh, 
number one, I don't hurt as much. Getting out of bed is much easier. I have more right. energy, all these different things physically, but emotionally too, like I want to help people because I've seen what it's done in my life. And I want to spread that to as many people as I can. And just make it your mission, just like we talked about. Because hey, if you're a fitness person, you're probably going to get up early in the morning. You get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. If I like that 4 o'clock hour, uh, no. I've been doing it for like 20 plus years. But you know what? When every morning that I wake up and get out of that bed, I got the chance to change someone's life. You know what? That's, that's better than coffee. Still drink coffee. Don't get me wrong. But that'll get you fired up. You know, if I was going to dig ditches every day or work as a bank teller or something that it's kind of the same every day and it's just, I'm providing this, I, it'd be real, real hard, you know, that early. But every morning, I got to remind myself every now and then, hey, it's, it's getting cold, you know, it's dark, it's early, but hey, this is my chance. Somebody needs me, you know? That's, that's kind of, I've never been a big salesman. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Pat Reed's right. the best business coach out there. Exactly. So, you know, right. but, but my sales has always been, um, you need me. Because here's what I, this is what I do with my life. You know, I'll give you everything I got. This is what I do, and I'd love to help you. Um, my problem is, I'm sure you, a lot of fitness people had this in the beginning, that uh, you don't even have to pay me. <laughs> I just, when I first started, I was like, I just want to help people and do all this. But um, I like, like to keep a roof over my wife and son's head. And, you know, we like to eat and stuff like that. So, um, so we, I'd like it to be a, an even thing. If they get so much out of it, that they don't mind paying me. And I, I, you know, I'll give them everything I got. And, just like I said, every morning I wake up, that's the opportunity I have. So that's, that's just, that's what I want, I want to live because I can't imagine having a real job. Well, somebody once asked me if you, if you had all the money in the world, like what would you do? And for me, it would, it would still be this. Cause like you said, like getting to be a part of like somebody's journey of change and seeing that in their face every day. And like, you know where they're going to go. Cause you've gone through it. Right. Like, yeah, like I wanted to do it for free as well. Um, and th the truth is what I've learned is, it's not that I like giving it away isn't wrong. It's just people will devalue it then. And that's something we've had, we Pat and, and our, and our mentors, Justin and Fred and all the guys have taught us is, you know, the more that we value ourselves and what we do, people will see that they'll actually get their results exponentially. Cause then they'll turn around and other people will see them do it. So it's like our efforts will be multiplied um, by valuing ourselves, which is kind of like a cool, like, Mindset stuff, you know, Justin, he'd be proud, you know, if he's listening to this. Yeah. Um, the that's a show with Justin and Janelle, you, you got to check it out. Awesome, awesome podcast. And they, they are, I consider him my mindset coach. And, you know, exactly. He, Justin and Janelle. Kick, kick. They're great. So check that out. I'll link it in the show notes over here, but uh, yep. awesome. For sure. yeah, so um, that's kind of the deal though. So you got to, so you kind of have those pillars with your clients too. You know, you're not just, Hey, come lift weights. You know, you just like yourself, how you kind of, do your own techniques, you do mindset, you do nutrition, you do exercise, you do all these different things to kind of help your clients out as well. Well, I started to find out, like, there's been, like, so I got into nutrition, right? I dove back into fitness because that's what I knew, like, growing up, lifting heavy weights, yeah, that makes me feel good. So that's what I gravitated back towards. When that wasn't an option because of my injury, which was a blessing, right? Because I had to work through it and actually learn how to properly lift and not just, like, mindlessly go through things which a lot of people do right and then the nutrition component those two things linked together man that catapulted me forward people started noticing that i was changing they started asking for help i started helping them it morphed into i got a job at a local gym and then i ended up quitting my job and going full-time and working at that gym and then going to another smaller gym, more of a sports performance facility, not like a big box facility, which was more like what we do, Joe, like our small studios now, like more intimate, right? So like that progression was awesome to see that. And so after a while, like after for working for somebody for a while, and unfortunately the last job that I had, you know, I, I realized, you know, I didn't want to work for anybody either. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing was, People realized that John was different. John cared. So a couple of my students came up to me and they're like, hey, would you, there's a karate studio that doesn't use their space in the morning. They probably rent it to you. Would you be like up for like starting some classes and like doing, st still running your thing? So I approached the people um, and they were up for it, which was really cool. And it got me started. So I was renting space from another facility. And, you know, I did that for a few years and built things up. And I took what I was doing and it gave me a way to process all my pain that I was going through and also a way to like 
show people who like we all need exercise right we all need this stuff and joe we will we're gonna bang those drums because it's literally like freaking saved our lives and you know your wife and your child like i'm sure there's so much more better off in the world with you here just like my girlfriend and my sister and my mom and my people are better off with me here and for that stuff to happen right like getting all those things in place so my business was going helping people but unfortunately then I was having some issues in like my intimate relationships and that's where the mindset piece came in because even though like I was like doing all of these really good things for myself there was still like decisions that I had made when I was younger, patterns that were coming out, anger, frustration, not knowing how to communicate, not being willing to grow as a partner, as a man, to, to be intimate, you know, to even say those things. Like, I don't cringe now, but a lot of the guys, I'm sure if they hear this, they're like, bro. And it's like, no, bro, lean into that because you, that's where the magic happens. We talked about it, like being vulnerable and leaning into that space that's uncomfortable, that's how you grow. And then that's how your relationships grow. That's how you grow independently. And that's how people around you grow when you're growing and you bring them up the ladder with you. You don't push them back down in the dirt with all your negativity, you know? Right, yeah, so you, know, you gotta give someone a hand up. If you're up there on the ladder, help them pull up there, they're up on the roof with you. That's, that's what I was trying to do. And that's, that's kind of what I see in the world now is the biggest problem. You know, you know, they're all about getting their own success and not, you know, throwing the ladder back down for the next guy. So I've always gone out of my way to do that. I know you do that as well. Just try to help others as much as you can. Because anytime I get stuck in my business, which, which happens, <laughs> it happens I, I go and try to help somebody else. Because number one, if you can just, it's much better to do an action than just think about, oh, all these things that you know you're stuck with. Do something. So what I do is try to go help somebody else. You know, reach out and at least just you know lift their you know but brighten their day up help them out some way uh, something magical happens in my life all of a sudden oh i'm unstuck you know it, justin calls it the beautiful state get back into that beautiful state and then opens up creativity opens your relationship it'll be that much better so the mindset thing has been life-changing for real it has been and that's really where the magic sauce is and that's why i was kind of like knocking down Justin and Janelle's door to talk about it more and like share from where I was coming from because that's been like the last link. And like, you've talked about, like you said, like you, you do these things, John, mindset, fitness, nutrition. Well, mindset was the last part of it for me, Joe. And it was in order to get where I wanted to go in life, I had to get real with myself, the actions that I was taking. Why was I getting angry? Why was I getting frustrated? Why was I snapping at people? Where was this depression coming from? Why wasn't I able to grow, et cetera? And those are hard things to get real with. And that's why a lot, it's why, you know, during this pandemic, medical marijuana sales and beer sales and alcohol sales are all up, man. Because yeah. a lot of people don't want to deal with that stuff. Look, I get it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it takes a lot of bravery to face that stuff, right? And but have we ever stopped to think that a big part of why we're at where we're at, so much tension, so much sort of, it seems like hatred is because if we just kind of dealt with our own pain a little bit, we'd have the empathy to see others' pain. And we'd all kind of get along a little bit better because the truth is nobody can win when somebody loses. So we're all in this thing together. We're humans first. Joe, I'm sure if I, if I cut your skin, it would probably bleed red. My guess. Yeah, I think so. Too. Right? Me too. Me too. We're the same. Yeah. Right? That's how I know I like you, man. Because yeah. bleed red, just like me. Right. And I, I don't see, I, I have a hard time seeing beyond that and creating division past that. Look, I get it. We, you know, you uh, have a football team you like. I have a football team I like. There's things like that. Okay, ha ha. But in reality, we're all big boys and big girls. Or we can be if we learn to grow up a little bit and realize and care for ourselves and the truth is allow others to care for us when you let other people in when you give them an opportunity to see that you're vulnerable and let them know that they're not alone their walls come down and they feel like holy crap like this you know like here's joe and john these strong guys who lift weights talking about emotions maybe they're they're not unapproachable maybe they can help me like 
get through other things than just this last five pounds, you know? Yeah. Like get through other hurdles in life. I off my kind of overweight pictures, be like, no way that's you. Like, because I see a fitness person, they assume it's always been easy. You just, yeah, for some, some dudes, hey, it is. They grew up, they came out of the womb with muscles and frosted tips. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a tan, jacked and tan coming out of the womb, but you know, not me. Failed my whole life. So right. going out there and just, you know, it just it takes the work. You know, so, so they see that and they, oh, well, maybe they, maybe this guy can help me because I train other women. So there's already that. I'm already, um, um, I've never been pregnant. That's one thing I've never been. Uh, I hope to never break the uh, cycle on that would not be the first dude on that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you can, you can help people out. You can't be empathetic where they're coming from. But so let me ask you this. Uh, yes, sir. I think people can learn from this. What's, the, what's been your biggest failure and how did you learn from it? Oh man, I was hoping you would forget about this question. My biggest failure, Joe, if I'm being honest with you and with everybody out there, and it's really hard to talk about. My, my biggest failure was not seeing how much pain my brother was in. Mm. And, and I can't blame myself for that. I'm not taking that on. I, I've, I've worked through that. I'm past that. I realize he made a decision and a choice. I just know that had I not been so wrapped up in my own pain, I could have not saved him. Just the moments would have meant even more. Right. I would have less negative memories. I would have less guilt, you know, and I've worked through those things. I, I've, it's hard. It's hard to be here and knowing he's not here, but like Justin will tell you, and, and I've come to learn, even though it's really tough to imagine things in life are happening for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I come at it from that mindset perspective and I look at how does losing my cousin and my brother work for me, as I've worked through and processed the pain, the struggles in life, I've realized that that's a gift that I can turn around and help others who are going through the same things because we're all in the same boat. Like I was just talking about, man, yeah. we all do bleed red. And I really, I, my utopian vision in my mind, the, 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 the madness that drives me now, in, instead of going destructo mode is I believe that the, the more people that feel better, well, number one, selfishly, I don't have to hear their crap and their whining and their miserableness, right? I'll be honest. I, I hate it. I don't want to be around people who are miserable and I will call them out and they usually don't like being around me because I tell the truth. I don't have time to waste. Life has shown me it is too short to listen to your effing BS, okay? So knock it off or grow up. And that's kind of the route that I take. And the people that resonate, man, they're still with me and they're my people. And that's a big thing I've learned through Justin and Pat and our group, Joe. The reason I know you is like becoming who I really am is actually really helping people, speaking my truth that, you know, bringing that out into the light and, you know, taking what we've learned and showing people that they're not alone and, and that, that you don't have to feel this way for the rest of their lives that madness, that thing that drives me is just, I, I want to be around more happier people, more people who are living towards their purpose and not sort of healing from pain. We're all healing from something, man. I'm always healing from a workout. You are too. Like that process is always kind of in the background, but we don't always have to be hiding from a big tragedy or processing a trauma. You know, we can, we can get stronger. We can work out and do all those things and work on those things. And then turn around and, and help other people do that. And the more people that are doing that and we feel like we're not alone, we get to a critical mass point, you know, utopian, there's, there's more people hugging each other and being nice and smiling and doing things like that than honking at each other and flipping each other off and et cetera. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, you're in Philly. You probably see a little bit of that. So. Right, and I'm in Philly, dude. One of the places where you walk across the street wrong and you will get flipped off and almost ran over straight up. Center your brotherly love, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> say name now, right? All right. So, let's talk about this. What's your biggest challenge you're facing right now? I know this, especially as a fitness professional right now, there's a lot of challenges, especially with you, you kind of shut down where you guys are. But, what's, what's your biggest challenge you're facing right now? 
<sighs> well, the biggest challenge I'm facing are my business. Let's quantify. What do you think? Which one? Uh, how about the personal? First. Personal. The one that I'm facing, um, missing my people, connection, like not be like not being able to hug everybody all the time and just I don't know, like that's that challenges me. Like I'm a and I'm a more person naturally prone to isolation like i depressive by nature i go inward into myself which isn't always good i've learned that so for me to say that i've learned that even though i like my alone time to recharge i've missed my people and that's been the hardest thing of like just i don't call it normal life but like yeah man like going out and just like hanging out with your buddies and stuff like that it's like you have to really think about is that safe and and that is not a bad thing but it it's been a challenge okay yeah. Um, in the business, look, um, people are worried about getting sick. They're not worried about getting healthy. And the bottom line is, as much as we can help people and want to keep putting our services out there, I've had a drop off in business. Maybe you have too. Um, I'm still in business. So that's not been a bad thing. And I've learned, again, how to be resilient under pressure and grow when a lot of people could fall apart. And, and this is something that I'll teach people and people are seeing, wow, John is still in business. He's, he's gonna make it through, he's gonna survive and he's gonna keep helping us. We wanna keep being a part of that. Right. So, you know, that, I would call that a gift too, but, it, but it, you know, is, I would like people to, as proactively as hard as you're working on not getting sick, please proactively work on getting healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be the biggest challenge because I want to see more people getting healthy proactively. I think the world needs some of that right now, right? Exactly, brother. So, so with all that, that's still a grind. We're, we've been in this thing since March, right? So what keeps you inspired to keep going like that? Because it's been months and months and months, especially as a business owner. What keeps you inspired? <laughs> my the 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 people that i love you know my girlfriend jackie um my mom my sister my students the ones that have believed in me this far this long that want to stick it out and 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 believe in what we're working to accomplish um so as dark as some, like, like in the beginning of the pandemic, there was like those first two weeks and I was like, I can ride this out. And then it, it hits home and it was like, this is not going away. This is really, really, really real. And you need to do some shit, dude. Like, and yeah, I'll admit for, and I even put a video out about depression on my YouTube and that it's real. Um, because even though I was challenged, I still wanted to, let people know that they weren't alone. So like for three or four weeks, I things got a little bit darker. I put on some weight, I started drinking a lot of alcohol. You know, I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna like ride this thing out. But then I was like, nah, this is not who you are. I'm not happy. And so I joined a nutrition program and I wanna learn even more about nutrition. And as good as I looked and as buff as I was, I still could room for improvement. So I wanted to, and I knew what nutrition had done for me before. So I was like, I want to learn from somebody who has like a PhD in nutrition and, and all that kind of stuff. And this guy does. And so I'm, I've been seeing amazing results. I already have a six pack where I never could visibly see one before. And I'm only like 23 or 24 weeks in out of a whole year. So I'm going to, I'll give some progress picks closer to the end of the year, something I've never done. Right. So at a hard, another hard time where things are really hard, I was like, F it, I'm diving in even deeper and I'm going to end up coming out the other side of this when the pandemic and the clouds lift, I'm going to like look like Batman. I'm going to be ripped and I'm going to like show everybody, yo, like at the hardest times, you can still like be your best. And I, I'll do that from the front. I think, you know, lead from the front, show people you can do it, that you're willing to go through the pain and the struggle too. Um, because uh, Joe, you know it you're only as good as your last workout and that last one doesn't count. Cause then you got to do this next one. So like, yeah, okay. We've lifted some weights and we're like, we're kind of strong. 200 pounds is 200 pounds and it doesn't matter. And it will bear down on you the same always. Right. right? So we have to show up with that mentality. Like there are no free passes. 
keep working through that. And that's, I'll be straight with you. That's why I love like weightlifting so much, or just let's call it resistance training or, or exercise, but it simulates the tough parts of life. And if you willingly put yourself through a hard workout, the things in life that seem harder, they're going to get easier because you're willing to do things harder anyway. And it's, it seems simple in practice. It's not easy to do. I get it. Um, which is why when you change your mindset and you start making decisions around like, who are you? Do you want to be a new person? We have to get some new beliefs. And then we start challenging, why do you want to do this? Then we can start to put into some, some work, you know, better thoughts, better feelings, better actions, and better results. And eventually that'll start to feed on itself and you'll build a new pattern. And I think that's where guys like you and me come in is we're sort of pattern breakers. People come to us, they know they can be better. And they're kind of hoping that we say, yo, we know you can be better too. And, and in a nice way, right? And that's really all it is, is as nicely as we can. You know what? You did great by showing up today. And I know you got one extra rep in there. Let's go get it. Yeah. And they keep building on that, you know? Yeah, that's our job. Just keep showing up. That's why I keep telling them, just keep showing up. And, and the magic will happen. You would just get there, just get to the workout, just get to the gym, wherever. If you do five minutes, awesome. That's better than sitting on the couch, right? Just keep showing up, though. So that's really cool. We're going to get a little bit of a lighter note. So uh, if you could eat at any restaurant in the world, where would you eat? If I could eat at any restaurant? Yeah, you could sit down at this place. This is a magic world right now. You sit down, have a meal, and you got to tell me what, what to get there in case I ever wind up there. All right, well, I'm going to tell you probably like the, my, the, the best meal that I ever had, and I would want to go back there because I haven't been able to go back. It's a really cool, eclectic place, and I can't tell you what to get because the menu always changes because it's from a, a farm. It's a fresh farm, so it's always fresh ingredients. So sometimes they have pork, sometimes they have beef, always fresh vegetables, ingredients, local wine. It's in Montreal, Joe, and it's called Candide, C-A-N-D-I-D-E. Okay. It's amazing. Um, depending on the time of the year, it's probably seasonal vegetables, seasonal protein, seasonal, etc. and it's all fresh. It's so amazing, and it's all paired up, and you have local people showing you um, from Montreal, the, the cuisine. Oh man, it's the best meal I ever had. So I would want to go back there. Oh, I'm going now. I'm making a point to go. I'm gonna tell them, give me the John Bear table. I don't know where it is or what to get, but just give me that John Bear table. Man, thank it you for coming on. People, right now, please read this book. Please read this book. It'll take you 15 minutes probably. And how, how many pages is it? Uh, it's 361 pages, 3,600 and 3,601 words. So it's about 10, pa 10 p words per page. So if you're good at math, look at that. You can read this thing in 15 minutes. I guarantee okay. it'll change your life. You'll get something out of it that will change your life. And if he gives it away for free. I, I would encourage you to buy the, the physical book. You get the audio book thrown in there as well. Just $27, you get shipping and all that thrown in. Um, start, but please get it. Get it one way, get the audio, get the physical book get the download, whatever, you get it at his website. I'm gonna link all this in the show notes, bareknucklestrength.com is where you get it. And I'll link his YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff. Super interesting guy, always looking to help people out. John, thank you so much for coming on, man, this is great. Joe, uh, man, it was, first of all, it's been great to see your face. It's been right. almost a year, so it's been way too long. Um, we'll we can't wait a year again, brother. I can't wait to hug you, dude, because I'm struggling with that. I wanna give you a big one. Uh, everybody out there, I wish you peace, prosperity, and love. All the best to you. You can do it. You're not alone. Let's crush this thing. Do it. Thanks a lot, man. Have a good one. Yes, sir.